Aloha. Uh, this is Kenny Gabriel. Thank you very much for joining. Jaguar Power Astrology here supporting and connecting with the ancient 13 moon goddess, tribal knowledge, real knowledge outside of the hexagonal serious system of control that we uh, have been and still are under, um, under rule of and um, giving thanks to our Lemurian uh, and uh, Christy ancestors for all of their knowledge and uh, supporting them. All right, let's do some astrology. Uh, so I'm gonna take a look today at uh, this upcoming solar transit. I, for some, something just told me, hey, you should take a look at this and then I was like, oh, okay, why? Um, and then I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, this actually is going to be kind of intense. So um, July 14th, today, sun goes into Cancer, uh, 1 p.m., so I guess it's there now. Um, that makes sense why I've been feeling so uh, coming down. I was Everything was really busy, and I was full of work, and uh, now it just kind of feels like it's chill time, like, it's not chill time, it's work time. What do you mean? <laughs> but that's, that's the water for you. And um, I think for me, it's all about relationships. So anyway, for the world, we're all learning compassion and how to feel a little bit more. Um, but we're not going to talk about necessarily the sun and cancer so much as this wild relationship between Saturn and retrograde in Capricorn and sun in cancer and the moon joining it. Um, so we see here Sun or Saturn retrograde is six degrees, but actually if we keep going since it is in retrograde. Uh, July 19th, it loses a degree, goes into five degree Capricorn, and then literally the next day, Sun is five degrees in Capricorn. And actually, if we bring this back a little bit. I think I looked at this earlier. But this, that day, I think this, what is this? This is Oregon, so uh, Pacific Standard Time. Is it standard? Pacific Daylight Time. I'll say, what's, what is it, maybe 10 a.m.? No, I think it's 9, 9 a.m. Let's do this. 9.30. Nine thirty uh, Pacific time, United States GMT minus seven, July twentieth, twenty twenty, Sun Moon across Saturn retrograde, five degrees. So I'm like, whoa. Okay, let's let's, uh, let's take a look at this. <laughs> so. Oh man. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create, oh, let's turn off Discord here. Because that's going to be somewhat of a crazy endeavor. Let's see. All right. Yeah, so what I want to do is, uh, or I'm going to do, is take a look at the sun as its own ascendant and entity, and then take a look at Saturn as its own ascendant and entity, and then maybe just talk about what kind of relationship they could have. So let's start with sun. So sun and moon are together. Sun is in the moon sign. Um, moon loves the sun. Sun loves the moon, so to speak. Um, so they're both sophic planets. They both want peace. They both want enlightenment. Um, here they want a kind of egoic piece. They're five, it's five degrees, so I don't really know what you can expect in five degrees. However, it is in uh, Pusha, um, which is a beloved nakshatra. Um, so we can take a look at that energy too. I'll bring up um, a reference of mine for nakshatras. Um, but yeah, five degrees, the human experience, new experiences, um, 
places of learning, growing, mm, experiencing hands-on with our senses. That's number five. And uh, the planets, you know, they're just getting out of the zygote stage. Maybe you could consider the newborn babies. I don't even know if you can do five degrees. But I feel like that's probably the, the cut, the, the cap is five degrees from um, sort of in the womb to out of the womb. So maybe they're birthing. So our, our uh, uh, knowledge, our experience, our gnosis of compassion of what kinds of actions we need to take to create happiness within ourselves and for others. Um, uh, knowledge of the Buddhist third noble truth. Uh, all of my happiness is a result of my positive thought energies, energetic vibrations, and karmic actions as cause and all the Buddha's bodhisattvas uh, and Deva's blessings, all the gods and God's blessings, and all sentient beings, positive thought energies, vibrations, and karmic actions as condition. condition. So just beginning to learn that lesson, probably not even really, you know, who knows? I guess it just depends on where we're at, but uh, definitely moon is, sh is shining that lovely watery cancer and energy on, or sorry, the sun is shining it onto the moon. And, uh, you know, moon is um, comfortable here, I'm assuming. I'm assuming we'll probably feel very, very comfortable in our homes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, um, just looking at the sun, uh, it's a feel-good place. So, you know, we're taken care of. We feel blessed by the gods. Pusha's around. We can take a, let's take a look at Pusha. Pusha's just kind of just coming through, blazing like a force. Uh, I'll do Barbara because I love you, Barbara Pijan. You rock. You help me with so much. That's not. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Pusha's a really beautiful woman too. Um, doing things to improve health. Performing festivals, protests could be a part of that. Good for all auspicious purposes. People getting married, creating new bonds, new homes, new property, new relationships, new families, new mothers, birthing new projects, birthing new businesses. Seeks emotional stability and security via socially approved institutional rules and regulations. Oh, wow, look at that. I forgot about that. Shawnee, Mr. Saturn, Lord Saturn, just kidding, is the ruler of Fusha. Okay, so automatically I'm just freaking out right now. This is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this is huge. We're not even gonna look at Saturn yet. We're just gonna go into the sun and the moon because this is where we'll be at. Our soul and our mind will be entrenched in Pusha. May I possess the splendor of spiritual knowledge? Pusha connects us with the spiritual knowledge, but also religion, ritual, and morality. Oh, that is good to hear. I mean, probably a huge explosion of cults, <laughs> a huge explosion of religion, uh, maybe even a big religious announcement. Uh, who knows, maybe the aliens come down. Um, uh, definitely uh, lots of um, sort of spiritual big bangs will be happening during this time. So hopefully we get the truth. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe we can look at that. Will we get the truth? I don't know. Uh, I mean, the ruler of Cancer, the moon, is here. Jupiter is in its sixth house in retrograde. So, no, it won't be the truth. <laughs> Where's Jupiter? Jupiter is, uh, oh, 28 degrees. Mm, maybe. Maybe we will. Maybe we get a, a super wise, introspective Jupiter working hard 
to give people the ancient truth. That might be what we give. Hey, maybe I'm a part of that. I hope so. Um, God bless us all. So, yeah, let's go back. Pusha. Um, I can turn this down a little bit. Pusha's considered the most auspicious. Very true. Um, God bless you, Vishnu. Systematic, uh, Shaunicized, I love that word, that's a great word, Shaunicized view of uh, the oceans of emotions in Cancer, um, often gifted in navigation, shipcraft, and seamen, who should often superbly ordered and procedural in their capacity to manipulate and direct a ship. This roles such as naval commander, shipmaster come easily whether for career or for sport. So um, I think I think what I'm feeling here is that this is actually going to be a place where we can truly direct ourselves and live with more compassion. And I'm guessing that it'll be a catal uh, catalytic, catalytic event. Um, there'll be a catalyst with this whole Saturn retrograde thing here. Um, there'll be a, ca a, a catalytic event that will enable us to be more compassionate and really start thinking, what do we need to pursue? Is there something um, that is a bit more spiritual? I'm, I'm seeing things in the 12th house, 11th, 9th, 10, 9th slash 10, um, 6th and 7th. So yeah, let's take a look. All right, so there we go. Um, we're super compassionate, or at least we're learning what compassion is. We're learning about our feelings. We haven't known about them for very long. We've been working super hard and just kind of focused on making money and creating our empire. And now we're reflecting on what we need to do and how we're existing and who is existing and who am I in the first place. And we're thinking about um, peace on a local level. We're thinking about liberation on a local level. We're thinking about how can I be free of all this pain? <laughs> Where's the pain coming from, I wonder? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, we're thinking about how to be free, uh, and we're thinking, and we're 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 learning what real compassion is and what real self compassion is. So, okay, cool. Second house, the ascendant. I mean, the ascendant changes every hour, but uh, you know, this happens to be the hour that this particular transit comes through. So, ascendant is in Leo. Um, the Navamsa uh, placements for these are also in Leo. Um, so that's interesting. So definitely some uh, emotional content of empowerment and really changing the climate of the people who we spend our time with with people who actually empower us um and uh not people who disempower us um so so, so probably a lot of lessons around that depending on our own individual um angles um sixth house came to jupiter diving super deep into our principles again um, going back and checking uh, the principles that we live by and the principles that we work by and um, reevaluating the things that we're doing. How, how are we going about working? What are we really working for? Um, what are we really doing? Um, are, are, is what we're doing temporary? Is what we're doing for the long term? Um, uh, you know, maybe looking at the principles that we have been living by thus far in this recent Jupiter arc that went through Sagittarius. And then now we're reevaluating and we're saying, okay, well, what works and what doesn't work? Um, and not being afraid to let more of our principles and our beliefs that do not work go. So let them go, let them go. Um, so that's in the sixth house, that's the work. That's the work everyone's doing is let go of principles that don't work, be pragmatic, um, let go of space, you know, let go of the spacey, you know, I just want what I want and I want it to happen now. Let go of all that and, uh, you know, be practical about the principles that actually work in the here and now, um, principles that are of a higher nature that are connected to truth and God. Um, and most of these principles will probably be timeless principles that the Buddha and the church and cars of the Jain religion and whatever, Jesus Christ or the myth of Jesus Christ or Osiris or whatever you want to chorus, whatever you want to call it, 
um, Egyptian knowledge, Lemurian, Atlantean, or whatever you want to say, probably there's a timeless truth. Probably that's what you're connecting to. That's what we're all connecting to. And we're getting it on a, on a, a, a Gnostic level, an experiential level, a level of wisdom, um, and living with it and seeing what, you know, what, what do we have that's correct and what do we have that we need to realign. Um, so that's kind of where that's at. That's where we're working all sorts. Um, seventh house, house of relationships. We're creating new marriages with Saturn and Capricorn. So, woo, I'm not going to go into this yet, but uh, yeah, new agreements. New agreements, Pluto, zero degrees. Um, and Capricorn, new agreements with the government. New agreements with our daddy. New agreements with our inner father. New agreements with God. New relationships with God, new relationships with the metaphysical laws, new relationships with esoteric laws, new relationships with our own karma and how cause and effect actually work. Also five degrees. Yeah, I'm going to go in that later. Um, ninth, ninth house Mars in Pisces, square in Jupiter, retrograde in its own 12th house in Aries. Um, incredibly purposeful time here. Really getting, really learning through courage to dive deep into the spiritual realm, to ask questions that maybe we've been afraid to ask before. And, you know, we're seeing some of our craving and attachment nature dissipate due to these laws, due to maybe this potential lockdown, um, due to this potential second wave, due to uh, boundaries that we are creating in our relationships, due to um, just the boundaries of our life, the fact that nothing that we want in the physical world will ever give us lasting happiness in the first place. So we're pinned, our, our desires anyway, our desires and our attachments are pinned to this deeper reality and, we're ha and, and, and we will question, we will question what, 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 what am I pursuing? What can I pursue that's actually worthy? Hmm? What can I pursue that's actually worthy? Or we just keep we just keep wanting what we want and we get really frustrated. And so there's a lot of potential frustration, but for, but the purpose of that frustration is eventually our knowledge and wisdom. Uh, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto in, in the seventh house, Neptune in the eighth house. People wanting freedom, mm, figuring out how to get it still. Uh, that's in the background. Lord Varuna chilling in his own house on top of the dragon Capricorn. Still figuring out how to be free. Retrograde. Um, most of these thoughts will be cloud thoughts. The world in general will be concerned about being free and freedom and sovereignty and all that stuff, but it's just, it's just there's just cloud, cloud thoughts. Just fantasy still. Not, not quite there. But, uh, you get caught up in it, you're definitely going to come back to reality pretty soon. Um, Uranus in Mars's house, uh, maybe a lot of spontaneous spiritual work coming from knowledge, coming from sort of the world boundaries that we come across. Very interesting. Uh, Venus in 11th house in Taurus chilling. Venus has been here for like two months, three months for a long time. She loves it here. 22 degrees enlightenment in Rohini, the box of the ex of Rohini. What are we storing? You know, what are we keeping? What are we holding on to? Are we holding on to beauty? Are we creating beauty? Are we creating more beauty? Are we using our finances to further our life towards Buddhahood and ultimate happiness? Are we using our finances? Are we using our, our spiritual wealth, our financial wealth, our wealth of friends, our networks, our quote unquote resources, AKA other people? Um, are we using the abundance of God 
to move towards happiness for ourself and others, to move towards happiness for all sentient beings, are we moving um, towards more self-aggrandizement and um, more ego? Uh, 22 is having us look at what we're giving our energy to and to reevaluate it for our own enlightenment, for our, for our own happiness. So, yeah, 11th house, compassion, cancer, feeling into where we're giving our energy. Um, Mercury in the 12th house, in its own sign, uh, Lord Buddha himself with Rahu, um, who is actually now an agent, Rahula, an agent for Buddhism, in four degrees. Eleven degrees from uh, Mercury and Ardra. Different nakshatra, different placements, same sign. Mm. Gemini is a wind sign. It's also movable, movable dual, dual wind Rahu and Mercury. In the 12th house, really looking to move on, really wanting something else, wanting some other thing to have some pleasure, to be happy, um, seeing that maybe the pleasure that we've been pursuing isn't actually making us happy and maybe getting some revelations upon why that is spiritually, maybe not, maybe just look, looking for something else and just moving on to the next thing, but uh, a very heavy um, and mm, uh, deep sinking feeling in our minds during this time that what we're actually pursuing and doing might actually not be worth it. So looking at that, perhaps having some revelations about the spiritual world. Good sign. Okay, so that's the sun. Uh, let's look at Saturn retrograde. Saturn retrograde, chilling. Uh, man, it'll be in Capricorn for a while. It wants to be in its own house. The law, I mean, this is it, man. This is, uh, this is the complete transformation of our entire white love Syrian system. Um, yeah. Guttara, Shada, last plot I headed up towards Abhijit, in Abhijit, actually, I'm going to be close to it. Headed up towards Altair, star system, towards the Shravana, Shamana, listener, hearer, star system. But for now, here, five degrees, uh, a baby wanting protection, wanting to be governed, wanting boundaries that are perhaps immature or perhaps treating others as if they are babies and giving boundaries as if, as if, as if, you know, people are a bunch of babies and they need to be given baby life boundaries. In John Pluto, zero degrees, ancient, ancient, ancient karma, karma, we're getting karma from our past, getting karma from when we were a child, um, healing ancient karma. karma that we got from as Americans in the beginning of America is coming back the karma that we created from the beginning of our our lineage is coming up the karma that we created from the beginning of our life is coming up or the beginning of our existence as a human being is coming up laws created from 
deep pondering, but from an immature place. Rules and policies that are reactive. Not necessarily well thought out. They're thought out, but they're very reactive and they're very just based in fear. This is the this is the lower portion of Capricorn. It is what it is. I mean, it's so close to Jupiter, however, and Jupiter's house, but there's supports. I'm not going to go into that yet, but just with looking at Saturn, it's a very human Saturn, number five. It's learning new experiences. It's le learning new things. There's new leaders, new rules, new policies that be coming into effect. Um, Mars, third house. Interestingly enough, Neptune's second house, also in Saturn's sign, in uh, 27 degrees Aquarius, on the Pisces cusp. Near the second end of the, uh, or near the last end of the second house, Neptune retrograde, again, wanting internal freedom. From Yeah, wanting new birth, wanting to birth something new in the government, wanting to birth new leaders, wanting to birth change, wanting to birth something completely extraordinary, completely left field. Not necessarily having the power to do it, though, but definitely wanting it. Definitely having a uh, potential for it. Mars in third house, lots of zealot's ego uh you know doing things for the right reasons feeling like the law and the policies that are put in place are ultimately for the greater good but secretly they're just for selfish agendas um but perhaps even coming from a place of placement here of egoically created laws, egoically created policies. Venus in the fifth house from Saturn, Saturn retrograde in uh, Taurus. Yeah, fifth house from, from Saturn retrograde. It's interesting. Being 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 a government authority, being your own inner authority, and having a large account, meaning that there's definitely going to be uh, some changes in the economy. Um, but the economic changes will, will look fruitful. So there'll be like um, jumps in the stock market, jumps in the overall economic situation. It'll look like that anyway. But this is Saturn retrograde. So the, the manifestation of Saturn retrograde, where our uh, schools and financial institutions seeming like they have like, a you know, they're, they're given maybe more taxes or you know they're given um, more more freedom or ability. They're given a lot of changes. Definitely uh, policy policy changes in schools. A lot of policy changes in schools happening. July twentieth, twenty twenty is when all this is going on. Um, Rahu and Mercury and Gemini sixth house, Saturn retrograde. Six
six from Saturn in Capricorn. Mm, yeah, lots of nonsense debate, lots of lo lots of sin debates, you know, debates on TV, people talking very intelligently and seeming like things like, yeah, well, there's some, and like, lots, of, lots of like genius and statistics, but with Rahu here, it's really just for entertainment. There's really, there's nothing actually like tangible happening. It's just a bunch of people sort of working and talking and doing the daily grind and communicating a lot. And maybe some things are happening, but for the most part, it's really just for entertainment to, to occupy, entertain the mind. And that's it. Um, so people who are going to be into that on TV, you know, they're going to be like, change, things are happening. But really, it's just a bunch of, you know, entertainment. Um, moon in the sun, everything five degrees in Cancer. Seventh house from Saturn retrograde in Capricorn. Man, this is going to be nuts. This is going to be freaking crazy because... Saturn's relationship with, with Lord Surya, the sun god, sun and the moon, in Cancer, in, in a, a powerful pot, a spot for the moon, but a very weak spot for the sun. It's the sun's 12th house from the, na the natural sign of Leo. Um, so Saturn here is just basically going to dominate. I mean, there's really no question about it. Um, and it's going to take the, you know, our... our emotional inclination towards peace and travel and freedom and being able to kind of do what we want on a personal level and just completely lock it down and uh it's five degrees so it's really all about you know um, fears around death fears around you know having to bring bring in the risk factor of our lives, not, not being too adventurous, right? That's number five is adventure. So Saturn retrograde here is trying to lock down the adventure. No, no, you can't, you can't go, can't go everywhere. Uh, maybe even, I mean, I'm, mm, there even could be some things. Jupiter retrograde is, is, tw is uh, 12 house in Capricorn or it's, uh, uh, in Sagittarius. So there could be lockdowns of, um, planes of travel of uh, airlines it's possible mm. but jupiter is there and it's also powerful so maybe maybe not yeah seventh house moon and sun um definitely feeling very very restricted during this time july 20th incredibly restricted we want to be free but we can't that's that's the overall thing creating uh, uh, new emotional relationships that actually create a sense of um, safety for us. That's another though. That's a good thing that's coming out of it. Creating a sense of tribalism, creating a sense of um, uh, connection and harmony inside the tribe, um, redefining your boundaries of who you are and, and where you're coming from. Yeah, and then Jupiter retrograde in the 12th house of Saturn with K2. Saturn's 12th house. Old paradigms being rethought, old rituals of control being redone. Old principles of government and enforcement you know, what, what government is, how, how government should run, all of these things going to be sort of reevaluated. Yeah, that's it. That's, man, it's really intense. Yeah, this is going to be a really, really powerful um, time of change. And, uh, you know, overall, the, the biggest lesson here really is just compassion and learning a higher level of compassion, compassion for ourselves. And this compassion is coming from this catalytic event with Saturn, 
bringing down some feelings of restrictions, some, some manifestations of more laws and policies that create uh, senses of security and comfort. Huge uh, media ramp ups of like fear based stuff. Everything is going into cancer. So they're like the powers that be are just going to be pumping fear when really the energy of this placement of cancer is actually fearlessness and love and compassion and being protected by the gods and being protected by the elements and the spirits and the cosmic force and the Tao and the Tao and the, um, you know, the gods and the God and the deities and the syntropic ever all pervasive, always synchronizing, always harmonizing force that we give so many names to. And that's really what this energy is about is trusting that and surrendering to that. But, um, this, uh, Saturn retrograde is going to be really making us rethink how we feel, um, in our relationships. It's very interesting. <laughs>